Good morning, everyone. This is going to be a continuation of what we've been studying in 1 John. We've been studying 1 John, just going through it uh, verse by verse and uh, taking a few verses every Sunday. The first Sunday we did uh, 1 John verses uh, 1 through 4. And uh, it talked about uh, having fellowship with God. And it talked about who the word of life was, who it, what it concerned, how it was handled, how it was manifested to us. And so I want to impress on everybody this morning, uh, we talked about it in the lesson a little bit, or in the class a little bit, is that... Uh, the information here this morning is life or death. There is, it's, it's this simple, that God made the world and he's given us an opportunity to do good in that creation. And we have failed at that, but he has provided us a way to be reconciled back into that relationship with him. John calls that relationship fellowship. And so, one of the first focuses that John has in his first epistle here is that we have fellowship with the Father and the Son. That's in verse chapter 1, verse 3. So last time, we talked about the second half of the first chapter, and John began by emphasizing the basis which that we might have fellowship with the Father. That's um, verses 5 through chapter 2 beginning of chapter 2 there. He talked about that foundation, what, it, what that relationship with God is built on. He talked about the false claims that some people make. Some people say, Lord, Lord, right? But they're not really in fellowship because he's going to say, depart from me. And he talked about not only the negative things, but the positive things. He says, this is what fellowship with God requires. So what, is this, what does he say it requires? He says it requires an advocate. That word advocate that we talked about is parakletos. And it, parallel kind of is the first half of that word, parallel, two lines that are alongside of. So parakletos is somebody that was called alongside of you. Most often an advocate or a defender in a, in a court situation or... Um, who was called to defend your honor. Um, but John begins by emphasizing the basis that, of that fellowship, of that relationship with God there. He says that we need to walk in the light as he is in the light. We need to confess our sins and, and don't deny that we, that we have sin because all of us have sin. And we need to make use of our advocate, that parakletos, um, that is that Jesus Christ. Um, uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. So, last time we read uh, this passage here. Uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to read it this time, but we kind of discussed what it was about. But let's read this time. Let's read the uh, 1 John chapter 2. And verses 3 through 6. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. We can know that we can have a relationship, a fellowship with God. We can know that we are saved. There's some people who might doubt that, but John tells us right here otherwise. So what about that fellowship with the Son then? In our text here, John describes how we can know that we have fellowship 
with Christ. And this is, this is how we can know. There's two main points here. I want to divide it just into, into two pieces this time instead of breaking down each individual verse here. It makes a little more sense. A, a key phrase that I want you to be on the lookout for is, by this we know. It's found twice uh, in this uh, little group of scriptures here. It's found in verse 3 and, and in verse 5. In other words, here is how we can be sure, is what John is saying. And the first point is that we know, we know that we know him. And the second point is, we know that we are in him. So there's two words here, know and in. Know is a body of knowledge, and being in him, as you see, is a relationship, is a part of that fellowship. So let's read the first couple verses again. And by this we know that we have come to know him. If we keep his commandments, whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is perfected. So here's how we can be sure that we can have fellowship, have that relationship with Jesus. I know it seems kind of trivial, but how do we, how do we know who the him is in that passage? Is it God or is it Jesus? Is it Father or the Son? Well, in this context, it's the Son of God here. And that's referring back to uh, verse 1 there. In the, in the chapter, chapter 2, verse 1. And it, it really fits well with what John is trying to say about this um, in, in his epistle here, in his book. In, in chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, And we have seen and we have heard and proclaimed to you also that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so he describes the basis of the fellowship with the Father right after that in verse 3 of chapter 1. Now he's discussing the basis of fellowship with his Son. Let's talk about what it means to know Jesus. John frequently uses the word know, and this, this word is Gnoskos, Gnosko, sorry. Um, and it, it means a knowledge that uh, comes by experience, by sharing in the experiences of life together. This is something that he experienced. He's telling his readers, I was there. I gained this knowledge firsthand. I didn't read a book and learn about this. I know about this. This is why I need to tell you these things. In a, in a sense, it implies that fellowship or a communion has taken place. He has been in physical fellowship with Jesus. This is John, the disciple John, the apostle John, the beloved disciple John. And so he was probably one of the closest people to Jesus. Let's look at the second part here of how we know him. We can be sure, so the first, the first one was how we can be sure we have fellowship with Jesus. The second point here is how we can be sure if we keep his commandments. You see, fellowship with Jesus is dependent on keeping his teachings. Let's look at uh, John chapter 14, the gospel of John this time. In chapter 14 it's amazing the more I learn about Greek and, and the Bible the more you realize how close closely written I'm hearing creaking noises <laughs> the winds picking up outside uh, you, you realize how closely uh, related these these books are and literally using the same, a lot of the same Greek words. 
Uh, John 14 and verse 21. He said, he who, has command, who he who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will disclose myself to him. Judas said to him, Lord, what then is going to happen to you? What is going... What has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. You see, that's an important point. We can't can't come to Jesus. We can't ever be good enough to make it up there, like we were talking about in the, in the lesson this morning, in the class this morning. So Jesus, so God, through Jesus, sent his son to us. And all we have to do, it says here, if we keep his word, the Father and the Son will come and make their abode with him. So that's for us. So fellowship with Jesus is dependent upon keeping his teachings. And so one who claims to know is a person that has fellowship with Jesus and does not keep his commandments then. If he does not keep his commandments, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. So just like the one who claims to have fellowship with the Father while walking in darkness, that's 1 John 1, 6, that's in the first chapter, This person who keeps the words of Jesus, the love of God, is perfected in him. So this love of God that we're talking about here, is it God's kind of love? Is it God's love for us? Is it our love for God? Let's look at uh, chapter 5 there of 1 John. 1 John. John sets up several questions and answers them inside of the own, his own book here. What well, are questions anyway? Uh, let's look at verse 2 and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God when the love of God and observe when we love God and observe his commandments. For the love of God For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. So most likely this is our love for God that he's talking about here. And the love of God, and the truth is not in him. The love of God is not in him. So the love of God is perfected. It's made whole. It's complete. Only when we keep his commandments commandments. And whose commandments were those? Those were Jesus' commandments. So we have to keep Jesus' commandments. That's what he's saying there. We, we can, so we can be sure that we know that we are in fellowship with him and that we have perfected our love only if we are keeping the commandments of Jesus. To stress the point even further, John continues by pointing out that here's how we can be sure we are abiding in Jesus. He says, By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he has walked. So the word in here, in verse 5, the second half of verse 5, that we are in him, it's parallel to the expression, abides in him. They're very similar if you look at the original language that was used. So abiding in Jesus is described then by Jesus himself as uh, similar to a branch abiding in the vine. So we, we have this grapevine and it has a branch in it and it can't survive away from that vine. 
That's uh, John chapter 15, if you want to look that up later. There's a union there. There's an attachment between the branch and the vine. From this, this union comes communication or sharing. It can't survive without the main vine because it derives its life from that. So again, we're discussing the idea of having fellowship with Jesus again then. And that's how we are in him. We have to be attached to Christ. That's what he's saying. That's how we abide in him, is by walking in the same way in which he walked. So we can be sure if we just walk just as he walked then. That's, that's how we know that we're in him. So the person claiming to abide in Jesus or to have fellowship with him, should walk, should live just as Jesus did. Um, only, only those who follow his words then are going to be truly disciples of his. We looked at that this morning, John eight thirty one. And those who are disciples will become like their teacher. We looked at that one this morning, Luke 6 and 40, verse 40, Luke chapter 6, verse 40. So that's the goal of discipleship, and it's, it's God's scheme of redemption. That's how Christ redeems us. Let's look up real quick at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Kind of talk about chapter 6 this morning in our lesson, and uh, a little bit in chapter 7. Now let's look in chapter 8. Long about verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So you have to be conformed to the image of Christ. You have to become a disciple of his. That's the scheme of redemption in itself. It is summed up by the words obedience and faithfulness. So understanding and applying this truth should then have very powerful ramifications for how we live our own life. It's not a lot on this slide. It's just a picture of the world. It's just everything. You see, I'm not trying to be one of those, those preachers who's using hyperbole and, and over, overselling everything and making everything seem bigger than it is, but the information here is life or death. It's, it really is this simple, that God made the world, and he's given us an opportunity to do good, and we have failed that. And John says, if we have... If we say that we haven't failed, we're lying. And so he's also given us the opportunity to be reconciled, though, to have fellowship, to have that relationship with him. And he did that through his son, Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as we were talking in, in Bible class, if you want to make a change in your life, if you're ready to say, I'm ready to put away not just the donuts, but the cookies and the cake and everything and deny myself, not just a few things, I'm going to deny myself and become a disciple of Christ, then that opportunity is here for you this morning. You can make that change. You can be baptized. You can have your sins washed away. So we learn from John then that the key to knowing that we have this fellowship in Jesus is understanding the difference between talking and walking. It's like the old saying goes. You can talk the talk, but you need to walk the walk in your life. So anyone can say that they know Jesus, but we need to keep his commandments. We need to walk just like he walked. And 
if you need help with any of that this morning, if, you, if you're ready to make a change in your life and you'd like to, to make that change and you need some help making that change, let us know. If you are ready to make that change and you haven't been baptized and you'd like to, please let somebody know so that we can, we can take care of that. Or if you've um, fallen away and you'd like to, to make things right for some reason, please let us know. Let's all stand and sing.